how do you know if you have acne or if you have rosacea? I'm Dr. Dustin Portella. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and my goal is to help you understand the health of your skin better every single day. I know that it's hard to get in and see a dermatologist and ask your questions as frequently as you'd like. So if you have questions, drop them in the comments below for inspiration on future videos. Today, we're talking about rosacea because it's National Rosacea Awareness Month in the month of April. But first off, how do you know if you have acne or if you have rosacea? Because in many respects, they can look very similar. Acne is something, of course, that tends to afflict us at younger ages. This is a disease of adolescence, and it is a skin disease. It requires treatment from a board-certified dermatologist, particularly when it gets to more moderate and severe stages. But rosacea is a disease that tends to afflict us at older ages, on average between the ages of 30 and 60 years old, and it does tend to affect women slightly more than men. When you have acne, you get pimples and pustules, and they tend to develop around the hair follicles. Rosacea, on the other hand, if you're concerned that you may have rosacea, these pimples don't necessarily occur with the presence of a hair follicle. You can get pimples and pustules all over the face without being associated with a hair follicle. From a dermatologist's perspective, there's three main types of rosacea that we diagnose and treat frequently in the clinic. The most common is something called erythematelangiectatic rosacea. That is a fancy way of saying that you developed redness with extra blood vessels on the face. Now, rosacea typically affects the face, but it may affect the chest as well, and it can affect the ears, as we'll talk about with one of the other types. But to elaborate on erythematelangiectatic rosacea, this is where you get a redness discoloration to the skin, and there's a couple of reasons that this happens. That redness is developed because you have blood vessels in your skin that dilate, and you may even form additional extra blood vessels that you don't really need, but they're just prominent. And you can see these tiny little blood vessels develop across the cheeks or up and over the nose, and they're very frustrating because once they're there, there's no way to get rid of them unless you're going to use a laser or some other physical treatment with a professional to make them go away. There's no cream or there's no pill that makes them go away permanently. Erythematelangiectatic rosacea happens because we have an increased innate immune system activation. There's two parts of our immune system, innate immunity and active immunity. When you get a vaccine, for example, we're activating the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system will form antibodies and should protect us from diseases down the road that we're exposed to, that we've been uh, exposed to in the past, or that we have been vaccinated against. The innate immune system is the branch of the immune system that is maybe a little bit more primitive if you think about it, but it's there to be the first line of defense against pathogens. And when the innate immune system is overactive, we have these um, excess inflammatory signals in the skin. Uh, the technical name for these things are caspases and matrix metalloproteinases, which is not that important for our discussion, but it causes the body to think that there's too much going on and it develops these extra blood vessels. It develops an, in, an immune response to try to ward off pathogens, but it leaves you with a red discoloration. For some people with erythematelangiectatic rosacea, they'll develop flushing where they may get a more intense redness to the skin. This can be embarrassing in social situations, and there are certain triggers that may play a role in it. If you have erythema telangic tatic rosacea, you may notice that you have triggers like alcohol, caffeine, uh, chocolate, um, you know, basically anything that would be good or fun. And so when you have those triggers, you're more likely to see an intensity to the redness that you've developed in the skin. And like I said, once that redness is there, the only way to really treat it is to do laser treatments like a pulse dye laser or an intense pulse light or broadband light treatment. And those should be sought out with a board certified dermatologist who understands what your skin is doing and how to best treat it. The second type of rosacea is called papulopustular rosacea. We touched on this a little bit earlier and it's the kind that may look more like acne, and that's when it got its name acne rosacea in the beginning. We used to call rosacea acne rosacea, thinking that it was more closely linked to acne, but as we've learned more about the disorder, it's really its own entity. So papulopustular rosacea is, you may have the background redness, or you may not, but you develop these little pustules all over the skin, on the cheeks, um, and up over the nose. This is typically a little bit easier to treat because 
topical medications and sometimes oral medications do tend to work better on papulopustular rosacea and give much more dramatic results than we might see with erythematolangiectatic rosacea. Sometimes it's frustrating because we find that we successfully treat the papulopustular rosacea and then we discover after all that goes away that the patient has erythematolangiectatic rosacea underneath everything that we just couldn't see before. Papulopustular rosacea can be treated with topical medications by prescription or oral medications and you have to talk to a board certified dermatologist to determine if that's appropriate for you. The third type of rosacea that we may see, it's less common, but it's called phimatous rosacea. Phimatous rosacea is where the inflammation is so intense in the skin that a particular body part, usually the nose, starts to enlarge and just continue to grow. When it happens on the nose, it's called rhinophyma, but it may happen on the chin or the ears as well, and those have their own names. But phimatous rosacea is a more severe form of rosacea that may require surgical treatment to correct, and we have to address that underlying inflammation that may be happening in the skin in order to prevent recurrence. So again, to touch on, there's three main types of rosacea, erythema telangiectatic rosacea, papulopustular rosacea, and phimatous rosacea. There are a few other minor categories of rosacea that we see maybe frequently, maybe less frequently, but ocular rosacea is one that may be managed in collaboration with a dermatologist and an ophthalmologist. Ocular rosacea is the same pathology happening along the eyelid margins, maybe the conjunctiva, um, what you see is gritty, sandy feeling in the eyes, um, burning, stinging, many more ocular symptoms. This can be treated with gentle lid scrubs. It can be treated with um, oral medication as well. And then there's steroid rosacea. Steroid rosacea may happen to somebody who uses a topical steroid on their face. This is something that dermatologists caution you to avoid frequently. Pharmacists also caution you to avoid using steroids on your face. If your dermatologist has instructed you otherwise, then it may be appropriate for you. But a general rule is to avoid things like hydrocortisone on the face. So what if you can't get to a dermatologist to treat rosacea? What are some common things that you can do in order to help improve the appearance of your skin? There's a few common themes between any type of rosacea, and that is that patients with rosacea tend to have a more sensitive skin type. That means their moisture barrier is compromised and they lose water through the skin. They're more itching, burning, and stinging. And so gentle skin care is an important part of the treatment for any of the patients that I personally diagnose with rosacea. It's important for me that we use a gentle hydrating cleanser. This is something that's not going to strip away the moisture barrier. It's not going to further damage and take things away from the skin that we need, but just to gently remove dirt, oil, and impurities that the skin doesn't need, but leave the natural moisture that you need to prevent water loss and to prevent excess inflammation in the skin. The second thing that's important for all patients who have rosacea is the daily use of a sunscreen. When you have that ultraviolet light that hits the skin, of course we know that that can cause sunburns, it can cause skin cancer, and it can increase your aging and the appearance of lines and wrinkles. But combined with the baseline level of inflammation that somebody with rosacea always has, you can see an increase in the development of those extra blood vessels and a more intense redness to the skin. So using a sunscreen every day and even picking a sunscreen that may have things like hyaluronic acid or ceramides in it to help repair that moisture barrier, something that you're going to leave on the skin all day. And then a moisturizer is very important in patients with rosacea. So in your evening skincare routine, make sure that you have a good moisturizer. This may be a lightweight lotion, or you may choose to have a more thicker cream-based moisturizer. And again, I like them to have things like hyaluronic acid or ceramides in them, but there's many that you can choose from that will help to prevent transepidermal water loss, to prevent you from losing water through the skin, and to just repair your moisture barrier so that you don't become even more sensitive than you already are. I hope this review about rosacea has been helpful to you or somebody that you know. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them there or to use that as inspiration for further follow-up videos.